Wi-Fi is great, isn't it? It can deliver real-world speeds of a gigabit or more and lets you stream 4K and game to your heart's content. That is, assuming your router's up to scratch, you don't have a bunch of junk in the way, and your mom isn't causing network congestion, binging say yes to the dress again. But what if we could go faster? I mean, even though Wi-Fi speeds have increased dramatically over the past 20 years, slowdowns are still common for all the reasons that we just outlined. And this is where Ygig could give us a huge assist. Now let's get this out of the way first. Contrary to popular belief, Ygig is not an informational campaign about the benefits of hunting frogs, but rather a new Wi-Fi standard that promises speeds of over 40 gigabits per second on one stream. Now this is theoretical maximums, of course, and the first widespread Ygig devices will probably have real world speeds of seven to eight gigabits per second, but like, that is still a huge improvement over current standards. So how exactly then are they boosting Wi-Fi performance several times over? Well, I'm glad you asked. Unlike traditional Wi-Fi, which uses the 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz bands to transmit data, Ygig uses the 60 gigahertz band, meaning that its signals are much higher in frequency, allowing them to transmit more data per second. Remember how the jump from 2.4 to 5 gigahertz some years ago also sped things up quite a bit? Unfortunately, this also means that Ygig only works over ranges that are much shorter than traditional Wi-Fi. You see, higher frequency radio waves are more easily attenuated by obstacles. That is to say, they're blocked. And you've probably seen this for yourself if you've ever walked far away from your router and then switched between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz on your phone. Although 2.4 gigahertz is slower, it also works at a greater range. So back to Ygig then. It operates at a much higher frequency than even five gigahertz Wi-Fi, which means that this effect becomes very pronounced to the point where Ygig honestly is mostly intended to connect gadgets within the same room. So that sounds kind of lame, doesn't it? <laughs> Why are we even bothering? Because even though no one thinks that Ygig is gonna replace standard Wi-Fi for most people, it could eliminate the need for wires in situations where being tethered down would be super annoying. Think about being able to cast a 4K stream between devices without having to rely on a congested primary Wi-Fi network or being able to use a VR headset without wondering if you're gonna rip the cables out if you wander too far off. In fact, the wireless adapter for the HTC Vive is already using Ygig technology. But Ygig could also find usage outside of this kind of super device specific communication. Many internet service providers, for example, are now offering home internet packages of one gigabit per second or even more. And there is the possibility then that Ygig could make users more likely to actually hit those advertised speeds since nearly every consumer PC sold in the last 20 years is limited to one gigabit wired networking though it should be noted that this is finally changing with two and a half, five and 10 gig taking off. On the subject of taking off, is Ygig gonna take off? Well, it's actually been around for a while under a slightly older standard that required clunkier equipment. So it hasn't gotten terribly popular yet, but we've just started seeing the first chips that support 802.11AY, the new standard for Ygig that offers more flexibility and better range over the past few months. So you might be able to find routers that support this new version of Ygig sometime this year, if you're willing to pay the premium. Times however many rooms you have in your house that you wanna have Ygig in. Cause yeah, the range sucks. Speaking of sucks, if you've ever been in this situation, it sucks, where you just need a quick video clip for B-roll or an After Effects template or a motion background, except it doesn't suck. Because you guys watch Tech Quickie, so you already know about Storyblocks. We use Storyblocks all the time and it's really simplified our workflow. Clips are easy to find and you can download as many as you want at a low cost to test in your project, whether it's a YouTube video or like a video background for your website or whatever the case may be. So instead of letting your creative needs take a back seat due to budget constraints or scrambling because a client made a last minute change, use Storyblocks as affordable, high quality footage instead of worrying about someone to go and shoot it for you. Check out Storyblocks today at the link in the video description. 
So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future fastest possible video. Don't forget to subscribe, because if you forget to subscribe, then, um, I mean, I'll, I'll be sad. You might not care. You probably don't. David, do you care if I'm sad?